Hello everyone, welcome to your favourite series on YouTube, I'm sure I'm, you're going to agree down in the comments, it is your favourite series on YouTube, tell me, is it? I bet it is, isn't it? I bet it is. Yeah, yeah of course it is. Welcome of course to the Player Spotlight, and we have another banger for you today, of course we do. Now I did mention uh, the other day that the Adam Hlozek one was quite a popular one of course, a very popular player on this year's FM, a lot of people knew about Adam Hlozek before doing the video, and you guys let me know down in the comments, like not that it was bad that I did it, but that you guys are using him, or you've had experience with him so far, so that's fantastic, that even though you guys are using him, you're still willing to watch me talk about them, and that to me, means more than you going, oh, like, there's a new player, because I, even though I'm not providing you with any new information, you're just enjoying the entertainment side of things, and I could not ask for more than that. But hopefully today, I'm going to bring you both entertainment, and I'm going to bring you new information, because we have a player who I think no one has ever mentioned to me other than one person, and you can probably guess who that is. It is my chief scout, Ryan Cassidy. He brought me uh, this guy, he brought the guy's attention to me, or the other way around, my attention to this guy, uh, when Youth to Gold started. And unfortunately on my save, he wasn't as good. But on this save, I think he is. So the man we are looking at today is Brandon Cortez. And I say, man, he is only 17 years old. He is currently at Boca Juniors at the start of the game. Uh, and as you can see already, he has some very good fundamental attributes to be an insane striker. As you can see as well in the positions, he can play in the cam role. He can also play off the left wing. So he does have 14 passing, although low vision to start off this game. This man has a potential ability of going up to 160. 160, it is 160. Uh, so what we're going to do is what we do in every player spotlight now is we're going to put him in a different team. We're going to stick him in that team so he cannot move by giving him a future transfer. And we're going to go a few years into the future to see exactly how he gets on. Before we do that, though, let's have a look and see how much we can potentially buy this player for. Of course, he is no uh, approach to sign, so we're just going to see how much we can get him for. And if I remember rightly, if I add... That's for 2.5. They asked for 4.1. We can knock him down to about 3.4. 3.4. And you could probably get him a little bit lower, especially if you add some installments or if you're willing to be one of these people that who don't mind adding the uh, percentage of next sale clause. Personally, I don't necessarily like doing that. I like to make sure that if I buy a player, I'm never going to spend any more money on that player again. That's just my preference, though. You guys have your own preference, and that's completely fine. Uh, but anyway, that's how much you can purchase him for. So for a 17-year-old and for these kind of attributes... You wait till you see what he can do in the future, and you tell me whether 3.4 is a good price or not. Let's go forward and see what team I've picked. So a little bit of something different. I have stuck Mr. Cortez, which, by the way, is a cracking name, Mr. Brandon. Uh, it's a really good name, Brandon Cortez. I have stuck him at Dynamo Zagreb. Now, in the Croatian League, Dynamo Zagreb tend to be the best team in there. However, there are a few teams around them that could potentially cause them some danger at the top. So I think this is a perfect standard for Brandon Cortez to like sort of show you what he really can do. I could have stuck him in La Liga. I could have stuck him in the Premier League and we would be talking, oh yeah, he scored 15 goals. We're going to see exactly what this man can do against a, t against a league which you would expect him to perform really well. And remember that going forward. For If you're managing in leagues just like this or you're, you're playing for teams which are dominating leagues, remember that when you're choosing Brandon Cortez. Now, of course, I'm going to go with a Ryan Cassidy tactic. I haven't spotlighted this tactic yet, but if you want to download this tactic, it is his very attacking Fabricator Chaos, which you can find only in the Omega Luke Discord. So that is your reason to join the Discord. Not only do we have insane tactics like this, but we have training schedules coming out uh, left, right, and center by Snook. We have so many things that you can download and and just enjoy your time in the Omega Luke Discord. The link is down in the description. And of course, Ryan has also provided a Patreon to help you guys support him with all his tactic creations. You guys have been loving his tactics this year. So if you can drop him a couple of bucks a month, I think he'd be very much appreciated, as will I. And of course, I've also got a Patreon. So, I mean, you don't have to choose between the two. If you are going to choose, pick mine. But 
There is an option for both. So we have stuck Brandon Cortez on a long-term deal. Uh, he moves to Bolton in 2040. Now, we have got a very similar-looking lineup uh, in attribute-wise, but we do have a lower determination. That's fine. We have a higher vision, though. That's how a potential... Uh, potential rating works some of these attributes are fixed which i think are is dribbling finishing first touch and heading however some attributes are randomized like determination so we still managed to get a good determination of 17 of course 19 would have been better but i think we're fine going with the 17 we do have him playing as the advanced forward which he suits very well and in this tactic we do have one uh, but i think what really relies on is the players around him so this one I've done it slightly differently. Each season I've stopped and I've signed certain players who I think will be better around Brandon Cortez. Okay, I spoke long enough now. Let's go forward a year and see exactly how he got on. Well, end of the first year and a very successful one for Brandon. We are champions, 96 points. We absolutely dominated the league, as you can see there, almost by 31 points in the end. Brandon Cortez was the highest average rating and the top scorer uh, for the season. Was he the top scorer of the league? That's what I want to know because that, I don't think he would have been maybe with that quite low. I mean, maybe he wasn't. <laughs> Funny enough, we actually, he's not even in the top. Now that is very weird. He is not in the top. So we have Petkovic and someone else, but we don't have Brandon. What happened to Brandon there then? Maybe he didn't play in many many league games i mean wow already he's looking very good and if we go back to him again we can see what his current ability is sat at current ability sat at 116 so we've progressed quite nicely uh 12 goals in 11 games in the champions league that says it all but the league form though we only played 19 games seven goals four assists i'm thinking yes look at that two major injuries we had out for two weeks there with shin splints. I've had shin splints. That's not nice. But also a broken lower leg, which put him out for four months. So he missed a lot of the games. The fact that he's still the club's top scorer is pretty special. Uh, let's just see one more f competitions wise. So they did win the cup. So a double, that's fantastic. They had a difficult group, Ajax and Liverpool, and they almost got through. Very unlucky there, uh, losing out to Ajax by a point. And then knocked out the first round by Shakhtar Donetsk. Okay, let's see one more year. Hopefully you can avoid some injuries. That would be nice. Now I must say what I did try and do the most when I was doing the transfers was avoid seeing what Brandon Cortez does. However, I will have seen how the team do uh, and obviously who was sold and what not. But I'm, I'm pretty sure there's only one season where I've seen how Brandon Cortez has done throughout the season now as you can see i've already made one signing harry wilson which i think is going to be an, ex an extremely good signing for the next season that will really help uh, provide some assists for brandon now let's have a look at brandon straight away i think he looked rather similar he's only gone up by about five there so a slow and steady start he's 19 years old and his mental attributes are not quite where i'd want them to be yet off the boys not bad Determination's gone down by two, but composure of only 12, concentration of only 10, anticipation of only 12, and decision-making of eight. So some low mental attributes there, but has he been scoring the goals? And if we have a look, he has been scoring the goals. In 30 appearances, he scored 16 goals and got seven assists, two player of the matches in total, with a high average rating. So fairly good. He scored 20 goals in total this season with eight assists in 37 games. So 28 goal contributions in seven game in 37 games. To be honest, I think that's quite good as an advanced striker. Uh, but to be an elite level, you want to see 25 plus goals really throughout the season. Hopefully, to be honest, just in the league. Uh, so maybe we will see that later on. But I think so far so good. If we do have a look at his progress. It is up a bit up and down there. And if we have a look on the all time, there is a few ups, but not too many. We've got one up there in the physical and jumping. Uh, but we have like the technical attributes are stuff which you don't necessarily require to be to be risen. We have two long shots, three corners. And I do see 15 there of first touch, which was 14. So I don't know why there isn't a one there. Uh, composure has gone up by two. Off the ball's gone up by two, so he is getting better at those attacking roles. One thing I have noticed, that is you can't train 
um, preferred moves when you have a future transfer, which is really annoying. And I only found out throughout how, through doing this. Uh, so what I might do in the future is maybe just add one key player trait because I don't want to take away the point where they can't they they don't have a future transfer because they can be sold at any point. And I don't necessarily want that. And sometimes they don't want to they don't want to sign on a new contract because they've got too good. This way it, it nails them down to this team, uh, so we can. You know, we can make sure that if I, as long as I am not sacked, we will see Brandon Cortez start in every game. So that's one thing that's irritating, but we'll get around it somehow. Competition-wise, uh, we runner-up of the cup, which that's quite bizarre, actually. Uh, we did win the league by 22 points again, and we were entering the Champions League. Why is that not how we won it? I think that's because we've gone a little bit further, the 15th year. Uh, so we won't see how they actually got on on the previous season. So if you go back to schedule, we can see they did make it to the Europa Cup first round. And they were knocked out again by Hoffenheim. Uh, so they did have a Champions Cup group with Sevilla, Liverpool and Roma. Two years in a row, pulling Liverpool in the group. Tough times. Executive decision made. We have gone for two more years now. This is the end of season four and we're still dominating the league. Happy days. Now, I can see something extremely exciting. Brandon Cortez has had a wonderful season. 44 goals, a 7.86 average rating. 7.86. I almost can't believe it. He also has the best pass and completion as an advance forward. How is that possible? He also has the most player of the matches with 12. The guy has had a phenomenal season. Wow. Right. So, and he is looking pucker as well. A huge rise. 124. No, 122 was his current ability after two years. After four years, we've jumped up to 154. This guy is now already a monster. Remember, the highest he can get is 160. So, at the age of 21... He's looking brilliant. And I and remember, I did say I made a few uh, sign-ins, which I'll go over slightly. Uh, but I think they've really play, played a part. And it's something that I might want to look and do in, in the future. Let me know if you think that's kind of cheating in a way. But in a way, if you were to sign this player, you would be making other sign-ins as well. So I kind of think it as like it, it's a legitimate thing. All I'm doing is buying players who I think will help the player that I'm spotlighting play better, which... You know, if I didn't make any sign-ins and he played terrible, we wouldn't have any videos. Um, but as you can see, 16's here. 16 heading, 16 passing. The guy loves the 16. Determination off the board. That's got better composure as well. Better anticipation. The mental attributes have begun to rise again and the physicals are looking really good. 5'11", so he's quite a structure with those physical attributes as well. Uh, the progress has just gone up and up and up. The guy is looking mint. Uh, so we can see in his mental attributes a lot of fours, some fives there on decisions. So that's really good because we were struggling with that two years ago or two seasons ago. Off the boards, plus four, plus four. A lot of the technical attributes going up by one or two because we know there are 14, so they've actually gone up by two. I don't know why it's only showing one. That's frustrating uh, that we know that that's actually wrong. Uh, some of the physical attributes have gone up slightly as well. So overall, he's done very well. In this season, oh my Jesus Christ, <laughs> 32 goals in 32 games with 7 assists and 10 player of the matches. That is total domination. Total domination. The season before, he scored 21 and got 3 assists with 4 player of the matches. And you think that's a good season, really, don't you? 24 goal contributions and 34 appearances. Mm. What about... 39 goal contributions in 32 appearances with 10 players of the match. He scored 44 goals in total in 50 games. And I, th I think that's actually quite disappointing considering the amount he scored in the league. 13 assists in total, 12 players of the matches in total. That is actually disappointing. In competition-wise then, uh, we just still didn't qualify. Difficult group though, Ju Juve and Real Madrid. Uh, we got to the second round knockout by Napoli, so that's annoying, but we also won the cup yet again. Did we win the cup before? We did, uh, so that's fantastic. And what about the league? Did we win it the, the season before? We did once again win the league, which is expected, I suppose. We're, we're totally dominating. I will quickly show you the transfers that I have been making uh, for this team. So as you can see, this season, 
we signed Matai Perrin. We signed this guy, Zico, who was a really good winger, which I think really suited and provided a lot of goals for. Uh, I mean, did he get a lot of assists? 12 assists. So there you go. It's working. I think this method is working. Uh, and then a couple of long deals that the the the, uh, the guy made himself. The um, oh, What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Director of football. That's who. He made those signings. The season before was the Harry Wilson year. I also signed Jack Butland. Uh, that was a transfer that I didn't make myself. And I think the rest. I only signed Jack Butland and Harry Wilson in this year. Maybe that guy as well. That's the only ones I actually signed myself. Season number five. And it is the final season. Unfortunately, I know how much you're enjoying this video. Oh my God. Brandon Cortez has scored 46 goals. So yet again, an astonishing astonishing season uh, they only lost two games that's disappointing Rijeka and Hajduk split so two rivals really uh, the other two best sides in the uh, in the Croatian league 94 points in total complete domination of the league they have 86 transfer budget Brandon Cortez you have done exceptionally well my friend he actually has gone down on finishing which is very rare that we see that so that's frustrating. 150 Saren current ability. So you can only go up to 160. Uh, but it does look like that's sort of maxed out now. Maybe it'll go up one or two more. I don't know. Um, but this is looking exceptional. 28 goals and 7 assists in 36 appearances. So he's, he's played more games but scored less goals. Uh, but still, very good though, right? 7.61 average rating. He scored more goals in other competitions, including in Europe, he scored 14 goals in 15 games with one assist. So that is brilliant because he's playing against better teams in Europe. Uh, a lot of them could be the, the qualifying rounds, don't get me wrong, but you'd imagine that he's scoring stuff in the group stage. So, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to see um, if we can just have a look at that how this actually has been going on. So if we do have a look and just see all the Champions Cup and the Europa the Europa League games. So he scored two there, he scored two there again, scored another brace there. So he is scoring. He scored in the Champions League against Red Star. He's not scoring against Inter or Benfica, but I think we are struggling in those two in those two games. Uh, but still in the other in the other games that he's played in Europa League. Some good goals against Anderlecht and Everton. Two teams that I would say are pretty much on par with Dynamo Zagreb. Uh, and he even managed to get a brace against Chelsea in a 3-7 defeat. So the defence has let them down though. But they do have Esposito, who is a cheat code on this game. Um, so, so far, phenomenal stuff. And that has been absolutely outstanding. So yes, there we go. They finished third place again, which made them qualify for Europa League. Uh, they won the cup once more and they won the league every single season. So a final look then at Brandon Cortez. And remember, he doesn't have any preferred moves. And we know that preferred moves are very good on this game. Uh, I've wanted to try and so I'm just going to add like one or two every time that I, I do one of these player spotlights now because I think... It is kind of important on how they uh, sort of play and how they respond. And I think I'm not doing these players justice by making the signers myself or making them have preferred moves. Uh, I think that could really change the way we look at a player spotlight in the future because those are the things that you would be taking control of yourself. You know, if you were if you had Brandon Cortez in your in your career in your save game, you wouldn't be not giving him any preferred moves be, just because in the video that I did, I didn't. You would be giving them. So I'm doing them an injustice. I feel. Uh, but let's have a look one last time at his progress, how he's done, all in all. Now we can see a lot of fives and six in the mental attributes. That's fantastic to see because remember in season one it was the downside of Brandon Cortez. Uh, his technical attributes have always been decent, but I think he's become very well-rounded now. If you did want to play him in that cam role, he has 15 vision and 16 passing with 16 technique, 16 dribbling, 16 first touch and 14 long shots. You could easily slot him in that attacking midfielder role as like a shadow striker, uh, as an enganch maybe. Even as a playmaker, he still wouldn't do a bad job. And I really do think with his agility and his acceleration... You could be looking at a lot of goals, a lot of assists from that role and probably some really good performances. Uh, but I really like him as the advanced forward role. I think that's his best position uh, and the one that he's suited to the best. 
maybe on the wing. Let me know if you've ever decided to use this player on the wing, but I really do like Brandon Cortez. I think he's an extremely good player who nobody really has spoke to me about uh, since the game came out. Only one man, Ryan Cassidy. And I'm disappointed I've never been able to use him myself because I've seen how good he becomes and uh, I've never managed to sign him. Uh, spoiler, I've actually tried to sign him twice on World Rock Domination. Both times he's let me down because Boca was in the leagues above. He just didn't want to come to me. So, Brandon Cortez, he slipped away from me plenty of times. But I've, I've saved him for a cracking video. Uh, and I think he's really done us justice here, isn't he? He has really set the bar. I mean, this season here, that season there, of 32 goals in 32 appearances, 44 in total. And then this season, he gets two more. He gets two more goals. I mean, they're in different competitions, but he gets two more goals in total. But a 7.98 average rating is absolutely phenomenal for an advanced forward. And I mean that because a lot of these players, a lot of these strikers score goals, but in games where they don't score goals, they have such a low rating and it really affects their average rating. So the fact that he's, he got across the whole season in the league a 7.98 really astonishes me. And in, in all competitions, if you consider the, the uh, continental competitions then, the games he, he struggled, I think that was the year that they had Real Madrid and Juve, he still got a 7.86 in total across that league. Phenomenal stuff. So there we have it then. That is another player spotlight in the bag. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you did, smash that like button because it really does make a difference to the YouTube algorithm. And I can see already that the views that I've been getting from these player spotlights have been absolutely astonishing. That's thanks to you guys and you guys alone. You've been get, you've been showing me the support. Ever since I've come away from FN Scout, you guys have been showing me the support, showing me that you want to see these player spotlights still and you want me to be presenting the player spotlights to you. Uh, you've been smashing the like button. You've been leaving the comments. Every time I ask for feedback on whether you'd like to see someone uh, who is lower down for these lower leagues, you've been helping me and saying yes because next week we do have two player spotlights because you guys have been enjoying them so much. One player is going to be for a top level club. The other one is going to be for a lower league club or a lower reputation club. Maybe for a league which you don't necessarily have the world's best players in. This player is going to be perfect for you. I haven't done the test yet, but he looks insane. And you can pick him up for £7,000 at the start. Probably cheaper, but that's what I, what I managed to negotiate. £7,000. An absolute bargain, and you would ne I guarantee you'd never have heard of him. So please, if this is your first time around and the first time you've ever discovered my channel, please smash that subscribe button if you can. We're en route now to 5,000 subscribers. We've managed to surpass 4,500. We're en route to the 5,000. Help me get there. Massive thank you to everyone who sponsors me on Patreon as well. If you'd like to do just that and help me get a little bit closer to being a full-time YouTuber or just up in my schedule slightly, then please check out the Patreon down below. Just a couple of bucks a month. Uh, it's surprising how much all of that builds up when every single person is supporting just like yourself. It really does make a difference to my life and really spares me on to produce more content just like this. So thank you everyone who does that and I shall see you guys on the next one. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Well, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, there's another one below that I have picked for you to have a look at. Also, if you'd like to sponsor me as a content creator by pledging to my Patreon page, you can do just that by following the link below and be like one of these wonderful people. Thank you.